Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Rajeshwari Sinha, working as Program Officer at the Center for Science and Environment, New Delhi. Today, in this lecture, we are going to learn about enzyme region and stereospecificity. In today's lecture, we are going to focus on understanding what do we mean by enzyme specificity, the various types of enzyme specificity and what is the difference between enzyme stereospecificity and enzyme stereoselectivity. This lecture will be broadly divided into three sections. We will first study what is enzyme specificity. In the next section, we will look at the various types of enzyme specificity such as bond, group, substrate, optical, geometrical and cofactor specificity. Lastly, we are also going to see how stereospecificity differs from stereoselectivity. In today's lecture, we will focus on understanding what is enzyme specificity, the various types of enzyme specificity and what is the difference between enzyme stereospecificity and enzyme stereoselectivity. This slide shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study what do we mean by enzyme specificity. In the next section, we will look at the various types of enzyme specificity, namely bond specificity, group specificity, substrate specificity, optical specificity, geometrical specificity and cofactor specificity. Lastly, we will see how two similar terms stereospecificity and stereoselectivity differ in enzymology. Enzyme specificity. What do we mean by this term? Enzyme specificity means the ability of an enzyme to select a particular specific substrate from a group of similar molecules to act upon. This is a unique property of the enzyme. Enzymes can show different degrees of specificity ranging from high to low towards its particular substrate. Types of enzyme specificity. Enzyme specificity is generally of six distinct types. These are bond specificity, group specificity, substrate, optical, geometrical and cofactor specificity. Now we will look at each of these specificity types in detail. Bond specificity. Enzymes showing this specificity are specific for substrates which have similar bonds or similar structure. The enzyme shows specificity to only certain types of bonds. For example, peptide bonds, glycosidic bonds, ester bonds, etc. For instance, alpha amylase enzyme hydrolyzes the alpha 1,4 linkage in the glycosidic bonds of carbohydrates, lipases hydrolyze the ester linkages between a glycerol and a fatty acid and proteinases hydrolyze the peptide bonds that are formed between amino acids. The figure here shows how proteinase enzymes are specific to peptide bonds which exist between amino acids. Bond specificity is also known by another term which is called relative specificity. Group specificity. In this type of specificity, the enzyme is not only specific to a bond but also to the groups which are surrounding the bonds. For example, enzyme pepsin hydrolyzes centrally located peptide bonds in which the amino group belongs particularly to an aromatic amino acid such as phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine. These examples can be seen in the figure 3 which is shown below. Trypsin is another protein hydrolyzing enzyme. This enzyme hydrolyzes a peptide bond in which the amino group is contributed by basic amino acids such as lysine, histidine and arginine. Chymotrypsin hydrolyzes 
peptide bonds in which the carboxyl group is contributed by an aromatic amino acid such as phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. Another name for group specificity is called moderate specificity. Substrate specificity. In this type of specificity, the enzyme shows specificity towards only one substrate and catalyzes only one reaction. For example, the enzyme lactase can catalyze the hydrolysis of only the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond of lactose to give glucose and galactose. Similarly, uricase, another enzyme which acts only on uric acid and maltase which acts only on maltose. Now we will look at what is meant by stereochemical specificity. This refers to the specificity of the enzyme when it acts only on a particular steric or optical isomer of the given substrate. This is also known as optical specificity and is one of the highest forms of specificity which can be displayed by enzymes. Let us see an example to understand this in detail. As shown in the figure below, we see that the L and D amino acid oxidases exhibit stereochemical specificity and acts only on respective L and D amino acids respectively. The L alanine oxidase will not work on D alanine as a substrate and the D alanine oxidase will not work on L alanine as a substrate. Geometrical specificity. As the name suggests, geometrical specificity has something to do with the geometry of the molecule. This type of specificity is displayed by enzyme which is able to act on different substrates that are similar in their molecular geometry. For example, alcohol dehydrogenases show geometrical specificity during the oxidation of methanol and ethanol to corresponding aldehydes. This is because both ethanol and methanol have similar molecular geometry. However, geometrical specificity is not very high. The last type of specificity is cofactor specificity which means that an enzyme can function only in the presence of certain cofactors. We have now reached midway into this lecture. So far we looked at what is enzyme specificity and what are their various types in detail. In the next section we will study what is the difference between stereospecificity and stereoselectivity. These two terms may sound similar but there is a subtle difference between them. Let us see how these two are different. Now we will look at a comparative understanding of stereospecificity versus stereoselectivity. As we saw earlier, an enzyme can be stereospecific when it acts only on a particular steric or optical isomer of the given substrate. In this case, only one stereoisomeric product will be formed. If we see the diagram below, there are two substrates with R and S configuration. The enzyme which is supposed to act on the substrate is not able to recognize the R isomer but can act on the S isomer of the substrate to produce the product D. Now why does this happen? This is because the enzyme binding site is chiral and due to the chirality the delivery of reagents therefore remains restricted to only one side of the functional group of the reactant. Let us look at few examples to understand stereospecificity in detail. Maleic acid is the cis isomer of butene dioic acid whereas fumaric acid is the trans isomer of the same. Malate and fumarate are ionized forms of these acids. In the reaction shown here we will see the addition of water molecule to malate and fumarate 
catalyzed by the enzyme fumarase. We see that the fumarase enzyme is stereospecific and is able to catalyze only the addition of water molecule to fumarate which is the trans isomer but not to malate which is the cis isomer. In another example below we see the enzymes that catalyze the alkylation of S glycerol phosphate will not be able to alkylate the R glycerol phosphate. Now we will see what is stereoselectivity and how it differs from stereospecificity. In biological systems the organic reactions that occur are catalyzed by enzymes. Enzyme catalyzed reactions are therefore almost always stereoselective in nature. By a stereoselective reaction we mean that only one stereoisomer is formed as a product preferentially over other possible stereoisomers which could have also been formed. Let us look at the example below. The diagram shows the formation of product B from a reactant A catalyzed by an enzyme. While there are two possibilities of the product formation that is the R and the S isomer of the product, the enzyme prefers only the formation of the R isomer of product B over the S isomer. This is the stereoselectivity of the enzyme such that only the R isomer of the product B is preferentially formed. Let us consider the addition of water to double bonds during the oxidation of fatty acids. We see that there are two possible products that can form the R and the S enantiomer but in this reaction due to the stereoselectivity of the enzyme only the S enantiomer is preferably formed. We have now come to the end of this lecture. In this lecture we have understood the concepts of enzyme region and enzyme stereospecificity. We see that enzymes can show different degrees of specificity ranging from high to low towards its substrate. Also they can show different types of specificity. Later we also looked at how stereospecificity and stereoselectivity are different from each other and also understood these differences through some examples. Let us now do a short summary of what we have studied in this lecture. The ability of an enzyme to select a particular specific substrate from a group of similar molecules to act upon is called specificity. Enzyme specificity is generally of six distinct types. These are bond specificity, group specificity, substrate specificity, optical specificity, geometrical specificity and cofactor specificity. An enzyme can be stereospecific when it acts only on a particular steric or optical isomer of the given substrate. Only one stereoisomeric product is thus formed. On the other hand stereoselective reaction implies that only one stereoisomer is formed preferentially over other possible stereoisomers. Thank you for watching this lecture on enzyme region and stereospecificity.